All right, welcome back. We've got a couple posts, people getting stuck with the uh, GSP lab number three. So we're going to take a look at numbers 21 through 25. And so what we've got on screen here is now we're going to have a little fun. So it's time to make an Escher type and tessellation. Create a new sketch with control N. So I've got that shown over here on the right. Start with an equilateral triangle formed by taking any line segment, rotating about a vertex by 60 degrees, and then connecting the points. It's going to look a little something like this. Take your line segment. I'm going to make it kind of look like a standard equilateral triangle, but that is not important here. So I'm going to click here, rotate the entire segment by going up to Transform Rotate. Notice I'm clicking on the pieces I want to rotate. And that would say 90, I'll type in 60, and I've now rotated. So here's my new point, and as you can picture, if I was to connect this side back, I would have a perfect equilateral triangle. I know it's equilateral because these two sides are the same. I know this angle in here was 60 degrees because that's what I rotated around. And because it's an isosceles triangle, because these two are the same, these base angles have to be congruent. And if those are congruent, and they add up to 120 degrees, they must all be 60 degrees, which makes this a 60-60-60 triangle. All right, on the side, let's see here, create the segments and one midpoint, you choose the side. All right, well, I'll pick this side and construct the midpoint. On the side with the midpoint, hide the line segment only. All right, so I'm gonna go up to display and say, hide the segment, there it goes. Now with this piece, <clears throat> I've got that piece done, hide the segment, now from one vertex to the midpoint, create some fairly crazy shape made up of line segments. The only condition is you must start from the vertex and end at the midpoint, and your segment should not overlap when rotated. So this is what tends to happen. People get a little crazy here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to create something kind of zany. And here we go. There. So I've got my shape kind of made that's crazy. What I'm going to do is, when I'm finished, select all the objects I just created, the points and the line segments, and rotate them 180 degrees around the midpoint. So what that means is, I'm going to go up to my selection tool and make sure that I select all of them. Again, I can do that by control, uh, sorry, by shift, and just kind of highlighting everything that's there one at a time. Uh, or I can click on each individual object. There they are. I'll double click on the midpoint and rotate it. Not 60 degrees this time. 60 would turn it into something crazy. You can kind of see the outline here. That is not what I want. Let's do 180 and say rotate. Now if you take a look, this shape is jagged, and this shape is jagged, but they would fit right into each other. If you were to take this entire piece and rotate it, it would fit right up in here. So this little piece right here would fit right up in here, and this little piece right there would fit right into there. Okay, now let's go back to the directions. Now hide the other two original line segments. Here they are, so I'll hide those. This will leave one vertex point all by itself. There it is, the lonely point. In place of the line segments, create another crazy line segment pattern from one vertex to the lonely vertex point. One vertex to the lonely vertex point. So here's my original vertex. I'm gonna to choose to go from here out to the lonely vertex point. And this is where you can really be a little bit creative because it's cool. All right, there we go. That's what many of you did, which is fine. And now I'm gonna highlight all of those pieces like that. Once you finish, select all the shapes and rotate it 60 or negative 60 around the lonely vertex point. Well, I want to rotate this one so it'll fill in my little missing piece here, which means I need to rotate it 60 degrees. I need to make sure I've double clicked on the correct point and then rotate. In this case, 60 degrees. Now, if you take a look, there it is. I'm going to say rotate. <clears throat> now, what happened here is my shape has overlapped itself. And you can see that here, definitely overlapped but you just created the shape. So all you have to do is move it. By pulling a point, you can make sure that your new shape doesn't overlap. And there it is. 
Okay. Well, that was kind of cool, I guess, in a sense. Uh, that point disappeared, so I'm just going to create the intersection point. There it is. So I've got all my little points and everything's okay. All right. Once here, now comes the fun. Take this new shape, select all of it, and rotate it 60 or negative 60 around the lonely vertex point from number 22. The lonely vertex point was right up here. So I'm going to take this entire shape and rotate it 60 degrees. And if you notice, it will fit right in with itself. And you can continue rotating until you have gone all the way around. And I guarantee it's going to fit right into itself because that's how we built it. So this was the original one down here at the bottom. And what I'm going to do right now is go through and click on all the points so that I can kind of shade this so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Way too sunny in California, I will tell you that much. Let's see here, construct polygon interior. There is my original shape. Do you guys see it? That is kind of a cool little shape. What I see is something with its mouth open here, right? So I kind of color it, maybe if I wanted to, maybe I'll put like an eyeball in here. Oh, there it is. Ruff, 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 ruff. I think it looks like one of those little rat dogs, like a little chihuahua or something like that, with its little arms out, begging for a little piece of food. And there's kind of its tail here and one leg and one leg going crazy because it's like a crazy dog or something. Whatever. Get to be creative. So maybe you're like, I, I really don't see that at all. Well, that's fine. But find something in your shape and create it. Now, the beautiful thing is this entire shape can now be translated See this little jagged point right here? It would fit perfectly into this jagged point. And this piece going here would fit perfectly in that empty space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to translate. And I want this point to be moved to the top point here. So this is where I mark the vector. And you saw that. So again, if I'm going to do it again, I'm going to click here, click here. Under the transform, I will mark a vector. You'll see a little line go flashing down that tells you exactly what you wanted to see. And now, translate. And if you do translate this, it shows up right below. And you could take another copy of this one and translate it so it fills in this little place on the side. Hmm. Well, that's all right. So I'm going to click Control A, which highlights everything. And how do I want it to move, though? Notice how it's kind of got this little edge here with this little jagged piece coming in. Hey, that's a jagged piece going in. A little fatty piece coming out. A little fatty piece coming out. Another little jagged piece. It looks like this piece would fit perfectly right in here where this piece moves to there. So I'll mark that as a vector, highlight everything, and then translate. And what you'll be able to see is, if you were to continue doing this, your shape, your original little triangular, what was an equilateral triangle, this entire shape right here is being used to tile the plane. And we could continue doing that as often as we wanted. If we went back to this original shape, we could also tweak it a little bit. You're like, ooh, that shape I didn't really like. I'd like the dog to have a smaller jaw. Okay, well, now you've made a smaller jaw. Ooh, the nose is kind of funky. I agree, the nose is kind of funky. So we could take that, maybe tweak it just a little bit. Or do something totally different. Where now it's a, the mouth is over here. I don't know. It's totally up to you. But this is a chance where you kind of get to be a little bit creative. And some of you, I think, will... Enjoy that, and others eh, might not. You're like, nah, creativity, not really my thing. But there you go. So have a little bit of fun. I hope that clears it up. If your pieces were overlapping, notice if I was to pull this one around, they would absolutely overlap, and it would be very, very hard for me to see what shape I have. So instead, move your little dots. If you move one dot, all of the corresponding dots will move. Move that dot, create some new shape. This is in... Uh, satellite dish uh, on an airplane. 
Yeah, that's it. No, use your imagination and try to have fun. I've shown you now kind of how to make your own little Escher tilings, if you will. And now it's up to you. So don't just sit back, try something, go for it. Off you go.